Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Scalability is one of the important aspect of system design concepts. In this video, we will explore more about the scalability and different types of scaling options and their respective pros and cons. By end of this video, you will definitely have a good understanding of scalability. So without wasting any more time, let's dive straight into it. Before we discussing deeper into the topic of scalability, let's begin by exploring a scenario. Imagine our friend Krishna had recently developed a chat application. Initially, he shared it with a small group of friends who were impressed by its features. However, as word spread, the application gained immense popularity within a short period of time, leading to a rapid increase in the number of users. Unfortunately, Krishna had never anticipated such a high volume of traffic in a such a short span of time. Now, can you imagine what might happen to Krishna's chart application? As the user load increased, the application started to respond slowly and eventually stopped working altogether. Given this problem, can you think of any potential options or solutions to address it? Well, there are a couple of options to address this issue. The first option is adding more power to the existing machine. That means adding better processors or increasing RAM, in other words, increasing the hardware capacity. By adding the additional CPU, memory disk space will definitely boost the application performance without modifying the code. This is also called vertical scaling. The second option is adding more machines. This means connecting multiple machines to take more requests from the end users. A new set of machines will be added to the pool and this will allow to distribute the load more evenly. This is also referred as horizontal scaling. So scalability means the ability to handle more requests by adding more power to the existing machine or adding more machines. Like any options or solutions, there will be some advantages and disadvantages. Let's compare them with some key factors. The first one in our list is load balancing. If you take horizontal scaling, we really need to balance the load because we will have multiple machines to handle the user request. Whereas in vertical scaling, we really don't need to balance the load because it is only a single machine. So load balancing is not required for vertical scaling. So the second one from our list is failure resilience. In case of horizontal scaling, it is more resistant because we will have multiple machines to handle the load. Even if one system goes down, we have other machines to handle the load. In case of vertical scaling, it is a single point of failure because we will have only one machine to handle the load. For some reason, if this machine goes down, then the users may not have access to the application. The next one is communication. In case of horizontal scaling, it requires network communication or calls between machines. This will be slower because we will have some additional overhead. In case of vertical scaling, it is an inter-process communication of a single vertical machine. So we don't have any additional overhead here like horizontal scaling. The next one is data consistency. For horizontal scaling, it means different machines are handling different requests which may lead to their data become out of sync. Whereas in vertical scaling, we will not have this issue because all the data resided in a single machine. The final one from our list is limitations. In terms of horizontal scaling, it is not a really a limit because if the load increases, we can add more machines to handle the load. Whereas in vertical scaling, we can only go up to a certain limit because the capacity is in a single machine. By considering all these factors, which scaling method that application teams will choose to design their application for better performance? Well, the answer is both because they will take some good qualities from each scaling and design their application for better performance. If we are doing the testing to identify the scalability factor, we should consider some of the parameters like the usage of CPU and memory. How the CPU and memory usage during the load? Is it within the acceptable limits? We also need to look into the latency factor to understand how fast the application is responding to the user request. We also need to measure the throughput and also the network bandwidth consumption. We also need to see how the user experience under the heavy load. With this information, I hope you have some better understanding of scalability and the different scaling options like horizontal and vertical scaling and the factors that we should be considering while designing the system. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss my updates. Your support means a lot to me and I greatly value your feedback and suggestions. Please share this video or channel with others who might be looking for this type of content. I will be creating some exciting and informative technical videos for the upcoming week so stay tuned. Remember to remain curious and keep learning.